Hi, I'm Hilary Stevens of the University of Rhode Island Coastal Resources Center. For the past three years, we have been working with partners in Africa and the Pacific Islands to help rural coastal communities improve their ability to adapt to climate change impacts. In this video, we share some insights gained through working with our partners and local leaders to prepare community vulnerability assessments and adaptation strategies. Communities benefit when we make a strong commitment and take enough time to prepare an adaptation plan that is widely supported by most of the stakeholders. A good process encourages people to take action, so we need to be prepared to follow up with a few key activities right away. Some actions can be difficult to carry out. Gaining support from and collaborating with municipal, district, or regional levels can help to overcome barriers to action. Finally, Adaptation planning needs to be recognized and become part of the mainstream in coastal development planning and hazard management. Lesson 1. Make the commitment and take enough time to prepare an adaptation plan that most everyone supports. It takes time to do a good vulnerability assessment and help a community think through adaptation actions that can be effective and feasible. Communities need to be ready and willing to engage and may find additional benefits by becoming an early adopter. Our country partners have various ways to identify places to work. In Ghana, a screening process evaluated risk and readiness of 77 communities before three fish landing sites were chosen for local level assessments. In Tanzania's Pangani district, six villages were compared to help local leaders choose two locations that were ready to start the process. In Zanzibar, two villages had just completed coastal management plans and were now ready to incorporate a climate change adaptation component. The basic assessment and planning process consists of recognizing climate threats, identifying local assets exposed to climate and non-climate stresses, determining the sensitivity of these assets to climate impacts, evaluating the community's ability to adapt, drawing conclusions about vulnerability, proposing and testing no regrets adaptation actions, incorporating climate adaptation into local and regional development plans. Ideally, climate specialists should assist with an assessment, but often this is not practical. Local technical staff can work well, even though they are not climate change experts, because they can stay engaged with the community long enough to complete the assessment process and help the community deliberate on the actions it wants to pursue. Long-time coastal residents can have deep knowledge of local environmental conditions and are able to identify climate-related changes and impacts. Vulnerability assessments prepared for Baje and Jambiani villages on Zanzibar's eastern shore involved experts from the Institute of Marine Sciences. Village residents expressed a number of concerns including shoreline erosion, sea temperature rise, rainfall pattern changes, increased storminess, and the effects on livelihoods such as seaweed farming. The people of Jambiani strongly preferred to start right away to implement an early action that they could manage by themselves without assistance from the national government. This involves replanting Ipo Mia, a member of the Morning Glory family, to help stabilize erosion-prone coastal dunes. Lesson 2. Communities want to take action, so be prepared to follow up with a few key actions right away. All of the communities we work in want to take action right away. So it is essential to be prepared to work with local people to get organized, act, and learn what will work out best for them while experiencing tangible benefits from their early actions. A dramatic example of this comes from the Republic of the Marshall Islands. The people of Namdrick Atoll were among 25 winners of the 2012 Equator Prize and then honored as the best community adaptation effort, and deservedly so. The successful effort of the residents of Namdrick Atoll was supported in part through its participation in a national conservation strategy called Remindlock, which means looking to the future together in Marshallese. This effort was facilitated by the Coastal Management Advisory Committee, a partnership of dedicated organizations from government agencies, non-governmental organizations, and the local college. The Namdrick Atoll Local Resources Committee drafted its local resource management plan in 2011 with climate impacts clearly in mind, including critical actions to increase community resilience, such as traditional crops like breadfruit, pandanus, and taro have been reintroduced to protect and restore soil and improve food security. A hatchery to cultivate the black-lipped pearl provides jobs and provides a revenue stream to fund community development projects in education and health. 
Rainwater harvesting is providing the community with access to safe drinking water, and solar technology is providing a source of renewable energy for households, the elementary school, and telecommunications. Namdrick Atoll Mayor Clarence Luther said, Serious coastal erosion caused by sea level rise is already occurring on all of our atolls. We cannot afford to wait, so community engagement is very important. Namdrick also banned sand mining for construction from its lagoon side shore where homes and infrastructure are located. Lesson 3. Adaptation actions face barriers that need broad support from beyond the community itself to overcome. The process of selecting coastal communities to work with along Ghana's western region generated some eye-opening results. The USAID-funded Henempuano Our Coast Project worked with local leaders to design and conduct a rapid assessment which rated the ability of 77 communities in four districts to adapt to natural hazards and climate change. Scores in most communities were low. The degree of emergency preparedness and its impacts on marginal groups was rated extremely low throughout the region. No community feels that they are prepared for flood hazards or other emergencies. Many settlements and fish landing sites suffer from coastal Ghana's declining rural economy. The Henempuano project is helping the District of Shama to adopt climate adaptation tools in its development plan. The Henempuano project has also begun work in vulnerable coastal fishing communities including the district of Ahanta West, in order to engage local villages to assess risk and incorporate actions within their development plans. Lesson 4. Local adaptation plans need to become part of the mainstream in coastal development planning and hazard management. The revolutionary government of Zanzibar has taken a number of recent steps in collaboration with donors, such as the United Kingdom, Finland, and the United Nations Development Program. It is working to address climate adaptation in a more coordinated way, which will help Paji, Jambiani, and many other coastal settlements work with key agencies when development decisions are made. Ghana has recently required all districts to include hazards and climate adaptation in their midterm development plans. The village of Kitonga in Tanzania is now working with Bagamoyo district agriculture officers to guide their efforts to improve food security with newly planted mango trees, and tests of better methods for cultivating rain-fed rice. To sum up, the coastal communities we work with are pioneers in climate adaptation, breaking new ground that needs to be shared with their neighbors and which should inspire national scale support and action to bring climate change adaptation into the mainstream. 1. Make the commitment and take enough time to prepare an adaptation plan that most everyone supports. Two. If the process works, communities will want to take action, so be prepared to follow up on a few key tangible actions right away. 3. Some local adaptation actions face barriers that need broad support from beyond the community itself to overcome. 4. Local adaptation plans have to become part of the mainstream in coastal development planning and hazard management. Sharing the results of vulnerability assessments and adaptation plans with neighboring communities can encourage them to act. In addition, making sure district, regional, and even national leaders become aware of the community needs and priorities can help ensure that community-level climate adaptation is a centerpiece of every country's climate change policy.